All right, I'm going to place assembly constraints for number three. And you can see what I've done so far is I've opened up a new standard IAM, a new assembly file, and I've placed in all of the components or the parts that go for number three. So I placed in four cubes. I've placed in one cube with a hole. I've placed in two triangles. And I placed in the cylinder. And I kind of put them in the orientation that I want them in. However, I'm going to have to go to e some of the individual components. And I'm going to have to right click on them and free rotate them to kind of jockey them into position so that when I do apply my assembly constraints, they're in the closer correct orientation than what they would have been if I would have had them placed too far apart. So let's go to constrain and I'm going to start with a mate. So I'm going to do the inside facing surfaces of two cubes. Make sure you're selecting the whole face and not just uh, the edges. Make sure you're selecting the whole face, not just the edges. Uh, otherwise, you could kind of be locked in. And then for, don't forget to apply. Then I'm going to do the two flushes. So flush the two faces that are on the same range. Apply. And then do two more faces. Okay. So I have two cubes fully constrained together. Let me hit apply. Let me close out of this window. Let me hit little house. And then let's just kind of check those. I can move them around all right. Now if I wanted to do the cube with the hole, the hole faces out. So I need to right click after I'm escaped out of everything and go free rotate. And then get the hole to face outwards. And then click off of it a couple times to deselect it. So the same process, constrain. We're going to mate the facing surfaces and apply. We're going to do two flushes. So for the faces that line up, apply and the tops. All right. So let me close out of that again. I like to do that so that I can kind of check and make sure they're fully constrained. If one of them starts to slide around, I'm going to need to add an additional constraint. Now if I want to continue with my cubes, I might want to move these over a little bit. I know that those will be stuck together and that they'll start behind the cube with the hole. So let's start with the cubes again. So I'm going to go constrain, click the face, and the back of the cube with the hole. Apply, and then we'll do our two flushes. We're going to want to flush off of the end on these and off of the tops. Close out of that window so I can check my work a little bit. Swing my cube around, and I'm going to grab and check that. We're doing pretty good so far. All right, back to constrain. Make sure I'm on mate. So we'll put the cube that comes out of the back there. Apply. And our two flushes. So two sides that are going to line up. All right, X out of my window. Grab my view cube and grab, move this thing around. All right, let's work on the triangles. So constrain. One triangle is going to come out this side. It's already facing the right way, so I'll apply that. Now don't get too confused. They're not up against each other, but if you look at the right angle, you'll see they're on the same plane. So if I go to flush the bottoms, that should bring that up, apply, and if I go to flush the ends, that should 
knock that back in there. Little house to see where we're at. Let's go ahead and close out of this window. It's all locked together the way it should be. Let's work on jockeying this other triangle into position because it does need to face the other way. So I'm going to right click, free rotate, and then I'm just going to swing it around so the back of it is facing towards our cubes. Constraint. And I'm going to make the back to this cube apply and then go to our flushes. Flush the ends and we're going to flush the bottom. And then we'll hit little house on the view cube. We'll close out of our constraint window. We'll check everything. And now the fun begins because we have to place the cylinder in the correct location. So let's try and uh, get the cylinder to face up so it's in the same orientation as our object that's been put together. So I'm going to right click, free rotate, and I just want to kind of get the top of it to face the same direction. I'm okay with that. Click a couple times off of it. I could drag it a little closer into position. I can grab my view cube and look at that. Now it sets on this middle cube here, so we're going to go constrain, and I'll start with the bottom, and I'll go to the top of the cube. I'm going to apply that. Now, closing out of this window, I need to try and get that constrained with some tangents. So, open my constrain window. I'm going to switch to my tangent button, the one that looks like a toilet, outside tangent, and let's try the outside face of the cube and the curve of the cylinder. Now it's shooting over an inch, so let's offset, let's start with one, goes in the wrong direction, let's try negative one. I always start with the positive before I check the negative. I'm going to apply that and then I'm going to use the same constraint with the end and the curve. And I'm going to try one. No, I'm going to try negative one. Negative one is not enough, so I'm going to try negative two. And I'm going to apply that, close my constraint window, hit little house, and success. We now have part three fully, fully constrained with assembly constraints from the parts that we already created when we worked on parts one and two. I hope that when you go to the computer lab you have the same good luck with this item that I did. So until next time, good luck.